Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm in Thamesford, Ontario at the Pride Seed Warehouse talking with Olivia Norenberg from Pride Seeds. How's it going? Good, how are you, Bern? I'm pretty good. Hey, are we getting ready to plant? We are. There's been some sunny weather here. There's actually people already going and it's only oh. April 14th. I know, I know. Hey, I want to talk about the seed these growers are going to be planting this spring and specifically size. Now, my understanding is there's four basic sizes. Is that correct? Yep, so we do have different sizes of seed and that kind of comes from actually the cob of corn mm -hmm. itself. Um, that's one thing that kind of impacts seed size. So we do have our larger seed that comes from the butt of the corn cob, mm -hmm. those larger rounds. We have our, our medium flats that kind of are in the middle of the corn cob. And then near the tip, we also have uh, those small rounds as well. Uh, other things that kind of impact seed size can be environmental mm -hmm. conditions. So we know that if there's drought stress or anything like that, that can affect uh, how many kernels there are gonna be on the cob mm -hmm. as well as size. It's the same thing for seed corn as well. Mm -hmm. So that environmental uh, piece is important and that can also determine seed size. And the last thing that actually determines seed size is kind of the genetics, the parent. Mm -hmm. uh, seed corn will actually uh, inherit what the mother uh, parents uh, genetics is for mm. seed size. So yes. naturally there can be some variation uh, based off of different uh, parents. Right. Hey, and but speaking of variation, let's talk about the yield potential. Um, is there any difference in yield potential on those across those different sizes? So no, if we're planting into those optimal planting conditions, there should be no impact of yield on mm. that. They have the same genetic potential regardless of seed size. What about um, uh, something like a small seed size? Now, um, are they capable of you know, doing as well as the other seed sizes in all conditions? So, like I said, optimal conditions, we can still reach those high yields. It's when we're planting into maybe those cooler, cooler soils that maybe have the potential of yeah. crusting, where we need to be a little bit careful with our smaller seed sizes. Right. Uh, just because they don't have as large of energy reserves as our larger seed sizes, um, it can be a little bit hard for them to maybe pop out of the ground in those conditions. But if we're planting into those, those warm soils, they're dry, they're fit, uh, we shouldn't have a problem. Yeah, but the other thing, the other point is, hey, I think you can get more small seeds into a bag. So that's also true. So with our seed, uh, I have a few samples here. Uh, one is kind of our large uh, TrueFlex large seed uh, compared to our TrueFlex medium three. So these are the smaller size. Um, so basically there's 80,000 kernels per bag with the, the TrueFlex large versus our TrueFlex medium three. So our smaller seed, we're actually able to fit 90,000 kernels in a bag. So that kind of just, you know, maybe gives the growers the option uh, to capitalize on that extra seed in the bag. Yeah. Any concerns about germination and quality assurance in the size perspective? Uh, no, so at Pride uh, and a, a, across other seed companies mm -hmm. as well, we make sure that we test all of our seed before it's going out the door. Uh, we do cold germination tests as well as warm germination tests to make sure that it is ready to go. Hey, let's talk about, uh, I guess, moving that seed into the ground. I mean, that potential become, starts to come together uh, going through the planter. So it's so important to do your proper adjustments there. Yes, so with Pride, we've done a lot of testing with our different seed sizes, mm -hmm. uh, as well as with third party uh, testing to make sure that we have recommendations mm -hmm. for different types of planters and whatnot and what adjustments need to be made. And that can be found on the back of each bag. It right. actually has those recommendations there. Well, exactly. So if, I'm, if I've got a deer planter or I've got a case planter, I can, I can check out those recommendations. Yes. Awesome. Hey, uh, I guess the next question is, you know, uh, the success of your seed is really about managing it from an agronomic perspective throughout the season. Um, I guess that starts with getting into some fit soil. Yes, we want to make sure that we are planting in optimal conditions. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we're getting that singulation with the planter, getting that picket fence stand. Uh, so we want to make sure we're getting out there and checking the soil, making sure it is fit, uh, checking our long range forecast for weather, making sure that we have the proper fertility. We want to make sure that we're reaching that genetic potential that is in each of the seed, regardless of size. Yeah, so that's throughout the whole season, Olivia, all the way through fungicide selection and timing and everything else. Exactly, yeah, so we want to make sure we're, uh, basically we want it to get off to the best start it can, uh, and that will also, you know, influence our decisions later on in the season. Awesome. Well, I know a lot of growers are starting out there right now. Thank you for taking some time for Real Agriculture on the Corn School. Thank you, Vern.